Hi, I'm Dave Holzer with Wisconsin Metal Parts. This is part of our continued series about progressive stamping dies. Today we're going to talk about what's in a die, what are the components that make up a progressive stamping die. The, the, when we're determining what goes into a die or what type of die we're going to build for a particular part, we're going to look at your part that you're trying to make first off. We're going to look at the tolerances, we're going to look at the types of materials that we need to run, and we're also going to want to know what your ultimate volumes are going to be in the life expectancy of what the tool needs to bring you. And then lastly, it comes down to what you can afford in your budget. So every tool makes a specific part, or sometimes there could be interchangeable things in it to make a series of parts. But in the long run, having a quality, well-built tool is going to give you consistent quality on your piece parts and also lower your maintenance costs of what it costs to run a die. So we kind of look at that as a overall package of your return on investment. What does it ultimately cost you to run a part? So here's a, a tool construction that we have here. This is a more economical tool, a little bit lower volume that we're running. So this whole block here is our die block. This is made out of D2 tool steel, hardened. And then we have our stock guides here as well. These are cutting stations that are in here. You can see there's still some material in here from the die running. This one's out for some maintenance right now. We have our pierce holes and then our pilots will come into play. Here's our piercing stations. As we move down the die, we've got some forming that's happening. As we have, this is the part that's going through. So this piercing is from this end. This does the front end, this does the back end. We come over here and we get our forming done. We come over here and we have this semi-pierce that has this uh, knockout in it. And then eventually the part gets trimmed on this end and the other, the other part would be here and this would fall off the die. So that would be one complete part in the progression of this tool. This particular tool, on the die set end of it, we've got roller bearings that fit into bushings and its job is to keep this thing nice and accurate every time it comes closed. Same on the top half here now, we've got the stripper plate, we have a punch holder down here, and this is our backup plate. So the stripper plate's job is to keep the punches, is first to clamp the material against the die block when the die comes together, and then it's also when the punches go through and pierce the material, its job is to allow the punches to extract themselves from the material and then the whole thing travels up and your stock strip will stay in the bottom of the die. If we didn't have this doing that operation, there's a very high probability that your material would stick to the punches and would pull up and everything would shut down and you would, you would ruin your stock strip in that case and probably produce bad parts and damage the tool. You can see the punches down through here, so here's our pilot pierce. These are round pierce punches. Here's that shape punch that created a punch on the, other, on the other end, piercing out the shape as this part moves through. So in this case, we are going at it like this. Here's doing the other side, and you can see what the pilot, as the material comes down, this cone nose is gonna pick up on that part and locate it. In this case, we're still attached. As we get here, it's piercing on both of these and forming. As we get to this last station, it's going to do the semi-pierce. And here's finally that cutoff. And then in this case, because we're upside down, this part would fall away and fall off the die. We got a couple of oil breakers on here, which we have on all our punch areas. And this is because we run oil during the production. And that oil can create hydraulic suction and stick and then our part wouldn't fall off. So these oil breakers are just there to help kick the part off the tool. Then we also have our stop blocks. These are ground to a very accurate size with a, a very accurate slot put them for depth. So these are ground to 50,000 steep and when the 
setup person takes the die, puts it together, puts it in the press. When that press comes down to the bottom of its stroke, we're going to take something like lead or solder and we're going to put it in there. When the press comes down, it's going to smush. The operator then can take this and check with their micrometer and measure that it's, if it's 75 thousandths, we know we got another 25 to come down to get to that 50. Normally we try to keep these a thou or two off the die set, otherwise you start to swedge into this soft die set. But that's how we time the die to make sure all the forms are coming together and all the pierce punches are entering when they're supposed to be entering. And we can also tell that if part of the die is hanging up, we know that something is binding or there's an issue going on in the tool because we're hitting here, but we're still too high over here. At Wisconsin Metal Parts, we design, build, and we run metal stamping dies. This is what we do all day long. If you visit us at www.wisconsinmetalparts, you can see more information about our services that we have. And if you're interested in talking about a specific part, send us your drawing and we'll take a look and we'll see if we can help find you the best solution to fit your needs.